Your eye care professional has diagnosed you with myopia. So what do you need to know about controlling it long term? In this episode of OkiTalk, optometrist Manveen Betty discusses what myopia is, common symptoms to look for, the management process for myopia, risk factors, and ways to avoid its progression. Hello and welcome to OcuTalk. Today we're going to be having a conversation with optometrist Mambi and Betty. Doctor, welcome. Hi. Hi, Courtney. Thank you for having me. Well, we're super excited to have you here today. To get us started, uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about your background and your specialty? Of course. So my name is Manveen Betty. I am an optometrist who's trained in cornea and contact lenses. My practice focuses on specialty contact lenses as well as myopia control. So I'm very passionate about helping patients in terms of making more of a difference in their myopia control journeys and just helping kind of like slow down that progression of myopia. Well, that's perfect because today we were hoping you could talk to us about myopia control. Um, to start that conversation, can you tell the audience what myopia is and what causes it? So myopia, as we also call it, nearsightedness, it means that it's a condition where patients are able to see uh, up close. However, they have a struggle with seeing distant objects. So in terms of myopia, it's essentially what we're looking at. Either the eyeball is getting too long or there's too much power in the cornea, the curvature of the eye at the front, that the light, instead of focusing at the back, which is the retina, it focuses in front of the eye. And that's what causes that blur when the patients see far away. So what symptoms should patients be looking for to alert them that, hey, I might have myopia, I should go to my eye doctor? <laughs> So in terms of symptoms, like the most common symptoms that I'll hear in the clinic, especially with kids, is um, having difficulty seeing the board at the school. So if a child's sitting at the back or in the middle of the class, they're not able to see the board clearly. They're holding things very close by to read. Their parents will tell me like the kid's going very close to the TV to see things clearly. And the other signs are when people are driving, not being able to see road signs, squinting to kind of cl uh, clear your vision. They're there can be headaches and eye strain associated with it just because of all that like frowning and then squinting motion that the patient might be doing all day. So those are come some of the common signs that we'll see in the clinic. So what is actually happening to the eyes when you have myopia? So essentially, the, my, when we're looking at myopia, we're looking at the eyeball that's growing longer. So the light's really not hitting the front, like the back of the eye. So it's really not focusing where it should. So if the eyes, if the light is focusing in front, first there is blur that's happening. The other issue that we are more medically concerned about is the elongation of the eye or the change in the axial, as we call it in the clinic. When the eyeball increases in size, we are looking at the retina tissue. Issue. If you were to think of, think of it as a saran wrap, it's being stretched over that larger area. And when that happens, then we are looking at issues like retinal detachments, holes, breaks that may be forming, myopic maculopathies, or glaucoma. So those are the conditions, or the pathological conditions that we are trying to prevent as we talk about myopia management. So what's actually involved in managing the myopia? So like nowadays, there has been tremendous improvement and advances in the like therapeutics that we can offer to the patient. So essentially, myopia management does not mean stopping the progression. It means slowing down the rate at which the child may be progressing. So now we have treatment options like drops, like your low-dose atropine drops that can be used to effectively slow down that rate of progression. There's options, non-invasive options like your glasses. So not the glasses that I'm wearing right now, but much, much more specialized and more therapeutic glasses that can also slow down the rate at which the kid's eye may be progressing. And then there are contact lenses, so soft multifocal lenses, as well as overnight or the keratology lenses that work phenomenally in terms of slowing down that route of progression and slowing down that elongation of the eye. So managing myopia means slowing it down. That means there's no way to cure myopia? So no, at this time, we don't have a way to cure myopia. But our goal is that instead of a child progressing to very high diopter values, where we may actually have more pathology to slow down that rate of progression so we can limit the like the patholo pathological aspect of myopia. 
What happens to a myopia patient if it goes untreated? Like if they just never do anything about it? So there can be a lot of different courses that patients can take. Some of some of the kids, for instance, when I was growing up, I had huge jumps in my prescription. So um, at some point, I stabilized by like adolescent, by 18 to 21, we're expecting the child to stabilize. So they can stabilize by themselves. Um, however, there's also the chance that they might end up with those like high myopic prescriptions and may have more of a risk of having retinal issues. So those are the things that we're trying to like normally prevent or slow down by doing my pre-control therapies. Does wearing glasses uh, make myopia better or worse? What is the relationship there? So that's been a common myth that we always discuss when parents come, like in terms of like, should my child be wearing glasses? Will the glasses make the kid's vision worse? Um, however, that is a myth. Normally the glasses, the role of the glasses is as simple as correcting the vision. However, with genetics, with environmental factors that the kids are subjected to these days, there may be those risk factors that may be still causing progression and requiring that change of that prescription and glasses. Um, the other thing that I always talk about is in terms of like glasses not making it worse, there's only one type of glasses that actually help. And those are your myopia control glasses that may actually help slow down. But the regular glasses won't make it worse. It's just one of the common myths that we normally have heard about when we've been growing. <laughs> exactly. So what are the difference between the myopia control glasses and your regular prescription glasses? That's a great question. So in, in a regular pair of glasses, you have, it's a single vision glasses. So there's the full prescription is essentially for correcting you for far away, depending on the lens that you're wearing. But when we talk about myopia control glasses, we have these like small eight millimeter circles through which the patient is focusing. So there's a limited um, like prescription that we have, that we're correcting the distance vision. And around it, we have these either honeycomb-like patterns of high-powered lens lids, or we have these like concentric ring designs where the, the, essentially it's focusing your peripheral rays in front of the retina to kind of reduce that signal for the eye to continue to grow. So those are much more specialized glasses than the ones that a traditional patient would wear, where the goal is to actually reduce that defocus, the peripheral defocus that we've been suspicious has been causing the myopia progression. Interesting. That was very informative. Thank you. So let's say uh, someone's diagnosed with myopia. What are the long-term effects? Like what does that look like long-term? So again, there can be a lot of different challenges like that a high myopia patient can face. The first thing is, again, we're looking in terms of like the immediate goals that kids might have versus vision correction, which is LASIK, which we commonly, commonly talk about. If you have a really high prescription, then their options with LASIK, traditional LASIK may get limited. Now we do have technologies with clear lens exchange and other options. However, we are looking at much more, option, more, much more invasive options at that point. The other thing is having glasses, like if they're not interested in LASIK, having much more thicker glasses than the usual, having contact lens or some sort of correction. In terms of medically, we're looking at just routine like exams every year just to make sure that the retina is healthy, there is no disease, and then monitoring for any signs of disease. So those are the differences that we're looking at. So is myopia hereditary? Are, it, are there people that are more likely to develop myopia than others? Yes, uh, genetics does really play a role in terms of myopia, like development of myopia, progression of myopia. There have been studies that have shown like having one parent versus two parents, both being myopic, can tremendously increase the risk of a child developing and progressing in terms of their myopic prescription. However, that also um, doesn't take the role of the environment away. Like since COVID, everything has become much more virtual. People are working a lot more on the computers. Um, schools have a lot more digital time for kids and all those factors in like cohesiveness and like in unity can cause a lot of progression in kids and can cause that burden of near strain that may cause progression of myopia. That is interesting because we've talked a lot about the screen time and the way the world has evolved digitally also playing into dry eye. So what would be the treatment protocol? Like what's the relationship between myopia patients and dry eye? 
So uh, kids nowadays have actually started showing signs of having those like early dry eye symptoms where they'll come and tell me like, I'm blinking a lot, I'm squeezing my eyes, I have strain, fatigue at the end of the day, some burning sensation, some discomfort. And all of that also, like the screen time plays a strong role in those symptoms. Like if you think about it, our eyes are meant to kind of look far away. They've been trained to have that far away stimulus. We blink a lot more when we're looking at things far away and when we're doing our mundane tasks. But when we sit in front of a computer, we're fo our focusing system kicks in, we are straining our eyes more, there's less blinking that's going into it, and all of that can actually cause uh, dry eye symptoms as early as in like kids. And so it's been quite surprising that we've been starting to see the signs of dry eyes as early as like young kids who are working a lot on the screens. So again, the therapeutics can range for kids. First, I always tell them like start with a lifestyle change, like a 20-20-20 rule with blinking always helps. Like every 20 minutes that you're on the screen just for 20 seconds, like look 20 feet away and then blink your eyes. That's a, a very simple thing, but it does take you a long way in kind of getting those visual breaks, especially when you're working on the screens that much. Well, that's actually really good advice. Thank you. Um, is there anything else you would like to tell our audience about myopia control today? Yeah, so a lot of different things. We have a lot of the therapeutics at this time, like the world has changed. There's a lot that we can offer at this time than we were able to offer back when I was growing up. So it's always important to kind of start early. If you are seeing signs of early myopia, like in kids, like starting maybe with lifestyle changes, building more outdoor time. Like I can't stress enough, like I'm in Canada, we had really bad winters, but when the, when the weather's better, like spending at least 90 minutes outdoor building that like reducing the amount of screen time as well as having the 2020 20 rule because not only it helps you kind of with myopia but also with dryness so it kind of works hand in hand so it's important to take care of your eyes and if you are seeing a lot of progression then considering therapeutics such as glasses of uh, drops or contact lenses those always work very well in terms of slowing down the rate of progression well thank you very much dr betty it's really been a pleasure talking to you today no, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure kind of having this conversation.